Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to more snow run. We are here in Duncan Bay, British Columbia. Contract that I want to take is in Uncle Fish Mode, humanitarian, humanitarian aid. Ah, oh, forgot how this is pronounced. Humanitarian aid. So if you go here, it says delivered to the desolate house, which is there. Got inside trailer, which is there. And then delivered to the lookout point, which is there inside trailer which is again here so you can see there are two of them so for this mission we're going to be using the uh, 605 the trusty steed so uh, I'm going to go this route and uh, go this way to get this trailer then I'm going to attach this trailer and then I will come back to this route leave this trailer here then go all the way up to whatever and then go this way and then there's an opening here in between the trees so we go uh, here and then up and then go back to the exact same route blah, 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 blah. come here attach the trailer again and then go deliver it there so Accept this uh, change to prime time in the morning. Uh, Six zero five with a saddle high. Let's go. The reason I'm taking both of the curtain side trailers together is that one I can hitch the truck, and the other I'll just simply winch and drag. But we need to, uh, you know, to. Uh, to a point where I don't have to drive all the way back for it. That's the only reason. I mean, the cut inside. Cut inside trailers are stupid. They do tend to fit. Yes, uh, they're not the worst trailers out there, but, uh, you know, I mean, any sane person would do that since you have to get two cut inside trailers in the same place and then you have to go almost halfway with the other one. So, you know, it only makes sense that you get both of them together. And then leave one halfway. Deliver the first and then come back to the second one. So, since we're going the 6 of 5, there's no uh, attachment, and then the super heavy truck is driving on its own, there's no need to, uh, you know, no need to put this into high gear or whatever. Auto should be enough. I just put the pedal to the metal and let it be. There is a section coming ahead uh, with the rocks, but I think I have discovered that if you travel through that section, keeping the path on the left, then you know it is possible. It is possible uh, without even you having to stop, and that's how the wrong pass through it. Uh, hopefully that's how the Zix is going to pass through it. We'll see soon enough. That is, this is the section I'm talking about. Just keep it to the left. Simple easy. Yep. Funny how the wrong pass and the Zix is struggling. But, uh, you know, there are rescue points, so. It's not the end of the world. You just do this, and that, and then you have to. So that's it. This was the hurdle on the entire route. Uh, then there's another one when you go up the zigzag road with the trailer. I don't think uh, that's going to be too much trouble. I think I've driven that past uh, there before. I vaguely remember uh, what kind of terrain that is. It is similar to this what we just passed, so uh, I will worry about it. And especially since we're driving the C R, you know, bring it on, I would say.
It's okay, there's a little damage from the pedals is expected because Snowrunner hates me for dying too fast. But, uh, okay, what it is. It's an empty top. Come on, what do you expect? I'm not going to put it in low high and you know, see if it goes through the swamp. I just want it to go through the swamp as fast as it can. Actually, even when it's exploding, I just want to go. If I just want it to go through the swamp as fast as it can. Generic reference, not less. There we are. The curtain side trailer pickup pump is visible now. We are close. This is where we have to leave the first trailer by the way. And go up. Point is also available, but the point is always available. So now, some people would say that you know, so you know, 5R is a total overkill for this mission, and I do agree in some way it is, yes. But uh, how the structure behaves when it's pulling those curtain tight trailers plus the zigzag route up. So I needed some fuel, and fuel is actually the reason why I did this. I would have gone with the Tega, I mean the Tatra, but uh, uh, yeah, you yeah, know. With the Tatra being slow with the awful gearbox, and since I had to do multi-purpose to get it up to speed, and then I don't know the terrain that I'm parking. So all in all, then I just, uh, you know, I just, uh, I just opted for this. And uh, yes, it is an overkill. Just really, uh, yeah, it is an overkill. And let's go, baby. And this is the other trailer that we want to take, so we need to take it with us. Go. I see I'm still doing 99.6 liters a minute, which is actually pretty cool. This is the turn I have to take slow. Because I'm a road train. And if the other train goes through, which it did, thankfully. That is what I want. Now I can even leave it here and then, you know, come back. But uh, I will leave it where I have initially planned it to drop it. Which is here. In 
then we go up, 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 up. 19, 20 liters a minute. This is where I'm struggling. Come on. I mean, it's a 6 or 5 or can't you see? I can do a coiling tube trailer here and not get bogged down. No, I have so much power. And I'm being dragged down by a curtain side. Yikes, okay, yeah. Turning was never its strong point. The liquid fuel consumption 19 liters a minute for the best equipment I feel. I mean, that's not even heavy. Rocky patch, rocky patch. Okay, you won't let me pass it in high gear. That much I figured on my own. That's okay, the trailer can go down, no problem. One of the advantages of driving the 605R is you do not care about the trailer. The trailer stays on your back on its own. At least give, give, give me one or two trees in the distance, you know, to, uh, you know, have a... As a beacon of hope, you know, that all is not lost, even if the 605 struggles for good, then you can winch it. Which, in my ego, I won't. We cannot go like this. I have to go like that. Yay. It's actually not that bad. Not that I'm through most of it. The only thing that I'm reconsider now is the entrance to the desolate house. But then again, I've, uh, I've entered the desolate house once before. So I have, uh, I have, uh, I have a slight idea how to go there. It was actually, it's a bit of a while, not for one, but I do know that I've been there. So if I've been there once, you know, I've been there as many times as you can count. Gazillion, gazillion, quadrillion, I don't even know what's, uh, it's more than a quadrillion or a gazillion or whatever. So yeah. 233 the few remaining we are through. We just have to go to this house. Which is there. Which by the way has an opening here somewhere which I need to track. Yeah, it is. It is this one, so we're okay. Let's just go there. There you can see the house there. This is the open. Yeah, there is a track as well, so... 
I'm not from the map, but yeah, back is a back. And then we go in a little bit to the desolate house. There you go. Excellent stage is complete. Now, we're gonna go to the other curtain side trailer and then we're gonna do the lookout mode. Which, maybe with my genius, we already have it. Now, let me see if. Uh, okay, no. I was thinking of this will cut to that, which it won't, so I just have to go back here. Cool. Where are my markers? Am I don't know the markings. Okay, let's mark my way before I, you know, get completely lost. So this is where I want to go. Okay, so I'm heading in the right direction. I could have done this without the marker also if I only had known that there's a, you know, track that I have to follow. Zigzag track, yes, I know. I just came from here. See, I may be going way too fast for my own road, but uh, yeah, hey, it's an empty truck, so what do you expect? And down we go. Come on, this was the point. You're still I'm not asking you to do something that you cannot. Ziggy ziggy ziggy. This is where I have to be careful. It's a narrow ledge, and there are no winch points on the left side now or on the right, so I may want to do that. Yeah. Cool. Last time we are safe. Anyway, I did something and the truck got some damage. We're still good to go. On to the local point with the other trailer. Where is the other trailer? Well, the good thing is I don't have to hitch these trailers in order to drill them. I can just drag them there. Which is, yeah, this is what I'm gonna do. You know, so if I turn here, and instead of trying to hitch the trailer, I can just do that. And then just drag it there. The delivery is still a delivery, you know, hitched or not.
Is the trailer coming in for sure? Yes, it is. Do I need to attach it? I don't know. Do I feel the really need to attach it? Yes. Will I attach it anyway? No. You know what? I will attach it anyway. <laughs> Come on, come on, how far is it? Just a little bit more. And then we're done with the uh, British Columbia. I mean, not British Columbia, we're done with Duncan Bay. Now there are three full contracts remaining, and all of them are in North Peak. So, yeah, we'll be heading there next. Let's just look at this first. That's such a narrow entrance for such a massive truck. What are you expecting me to deliver this in a scout? There you go. So, human, human, humanitarian aid is complete. Local residents are grateful and generous pay for your community service. So 6660 for experience and 6254 combination, which is which is well good, which is well worth it. So yeah, and that's how you complete humanitarian aid. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you like the content I'm creating. Please like, share, and comment. Good show if you haven't already up there. So every day. And if you made it this far, thank you so much. I will see you in the next one.